everyone, welcome to Freelance Friday. That's right, I'm back with a new episode, finally. I had been really good about doing a series called Freelance Friday for all of my freelance people and my social media people, content creators, people who want to be freelancers, want to be digital influencers, all that kind of stuff, and then I kind of fell off because of Veda, but I am back and I'm so excited because I have so many great episodes coming up for you guys. Today, couldn't decide if I wanted to make this a rant video or if I wanted to make this a productive video, and I figured let me just combine the two a little bit. So I've been seeing this story floating around my social media recently, and I finally clicked it on it on it last night, and I was laying in bed, I was up, like my eyes were closing, I was getting ready to fall asleep, and I got so angry. The story that I'm talking about is a blogger reached out to a Michelin star restaurant somewhere in Ireland and asked basically to review the food and to do a write-up in a travel guide or something like that, a city guide, whatever it was, in exchange for a free vegan meal. The restaurant posted this on social media. They didn't include the blogger's name or website or anything like that, but they posted her note and basically were making a huge mockery of it and were like, oh my gosh, this is so annoying. And a lot of people I know had been sharing it and like talking about how stupid it was that the blogger asked for this and blah, blah, blah. So let's talk about that. Do collaborations work when the influencer or content creator requests them? How can you write a pitch that actually converts? And um, how do I feel about this restaurant owner guy or whatever? So just to read the email really quick, we will be in Kilkenny, sorry, I don't know if I'm saying that right, specifically on 10 October. In exchange for a vegan meal for two, we would ideally like to try it, several items on the menu. We would be happy to provide significant online exposure on our blogs and social media accounts, including inclusion in our, ve our vegan guide to Ireland. In many cases, we'll also write a full separate review of your establishment, live tweeting Facebook, Instagram as we visit your restaurant. So the restaurant tweeted the start of another week in paradise with the eye rolling emoji. All right, so I'm gonna start by saying just rule number one of business, I don't care what kind of business you own, that restaurant owner, in my opinion, is very inappropriate. I will probably never visit that restaurant, not like I have plans to go to Ireland, but that's always gonna leave a very sour, foul taste in my mouth. Mouth, And in fact, a restaurant around here, somebody who works there um, in this area, I saw that they posted and like made a joke about it and I don't wanna go to the restaurant anymore. Not that I ever plan to ask for a free meal from them, but because I think that's just poor business. I don't wanna shop at any business that makes fun of people. I get the most crazy requests ever both as an influencer and as a business owner. And I have never publicly posted anything. Um, and I mean, I get asked to promote stuff for free all the time, do basically free work all the time. I have a whole video. It's about working for free and having your friends ask you for free stuff and everything like that. And I've never thrown any un un under the bus because I think it looks very unprofessional. So I'll say that to start. Now, with that said, there's definitely a right way and a wrong way to approach brand collaborations. And I'll also say that I personally don't do a ton of this, although I do plan to and I have done it. Restaurants, that's not something that I necessarily pitch. That's not my main focus. I do dabble here and there, but that's not my main focus. There are food bloggers out there, lots of them. And honestly, I don't see anything wrong if you're a niche food blog and you're going to do, you know, a serious vegan food guide, you know, to ask for some sponsorships along the way. So. How do I think her pitch went and how can you use this horrible example to hopefully better your pitches in the future? I don't think that her pitch was awful or I'm, I'm assuming it's a woman, I don't really know, but there are quite a few things that I would encourage them and you to change about it. And hopefully you'll be received a little bit better than she was, although that's just part of business. You're gonna run into people who are not professional, who don't appreciate your work, who don't believe in influencer marketing, and that's fine. Like, not everybody has to have an influencer marketing strategy, but if I was that business owner, I would have just said, you know, thanks for reaching out. We're not interested in influencer marketing at this time. We hope you'll still stop by anyway, or whatever. Like there could have been a million other responses. So here's what I would have done instead. And I do have to note that in my new course, which is launching in just a few weeks here, it's called Money Making Micro Influencer. I do have a whole section 
on the art of the pitch, if you will, and how to pitch yourself to brands. And I actually show my exact templates that I use when I do pitch to brands and templates that I use when I pitch for other people, talent that I represent, and it's gonna be a good time. So you can actually pre-enroll for the course right now at a special discounted rate. I kinda hate myself for pricing it so low, but it is what it is. So the link is gonna be down below, first link in the description box. If you'd like to pre-enroll and get like a full deep dive into this, but I'm just gonna go over some of the key points in this video. So here's the thing with pitching to brands. You want to make it about them. When I read her pitch, it's definitely very like, what can I get out of it? And as an influencer and as somebody who has managed influencer campaigns for brands, I do see the value, but that's because I, I know about influencer marketing. If I was just, you know, a random, more traditional brand that had never heard of influencers or didn't really understand earned media value or anything like that, I would kind of be like, this seems like she's kind of just like asking for a handout. Again, I still wouldn't have thrown her under the bus like that, but I do see how it seems a little bit self-serving. So keep the brand in mind whenever you're reaching out. Think about what you would want to hear as a business owner, which they care about numbers. They care about telling a story. They don't care when you're gonna be in town. You know, they don't know who you are, so why do they need you in their lives? So here's what I would have done instead. So first thing, I don't know if he cut off, he probably cut off her intro or his or her intro where they introduce themselves, but I would definitely say, my name's Latasha and I run a blog, a lifestyle and food blog called, a, I'm just saying food because it's a restaurant. Um, I run a food and lifestyle blog called ajourneys.com and link to it. Um, make everything super easy for them. So make everything clickable. Anytime you say I have a blog, I have a YouTube channel, I have an Instagram, link it so that they can cl quickly click on it. Um, I would first start out with a compliment and say, I have heard a lot of great things about your restaurant. Pick out a uh, menu item, you know, do a little bit of research on the restaurant, find maybe they're really great at, you know, if they have amazing French fries, I'm sure this restaurant doesn't have that, but you know, your, I heard that your truffle fries are absolutely incredible. I've seen lots of, seen them around social media. I've heard that they're great. And you know, the images I've seen of your restaurant is really beautiful too. Just give a little compliment there. Here's where she really went wrong. In exchange for a vegan meal for two, and then we would ideally like to try several items on the menu, um, I would first start with the value. Instead of, like when you say in exchange for a vegan meal, it automatically seems like, okay, she wants something out of me. So. I would flip it around a little bit. She mentions what the restaurant is gonna get at the bottom of the paragraph. I would flip that to the top. So I would say, you know, I've heard amazing things about your restaurant. Really, those truffle fries look amazing. I'm actually going to be in the area on October 10th and I'm going to be working on a vegan food guide to Ireland. Stop there. And then you're gonna say, you know, I've done vegan food guides for Detroit, for Paris, for Toronto, and they're some of my most successful blog posts. They average blank amount of page views, or throw out a stat for them. If your page views aren't good, you know, maybe they don't do very well, but it's still something that you wanna try. For example, I can relate this to this Freelance Friday episode because Freelance Friday doesn't get a lot of views, but my audience is extremely engaged. I think I get more comments on these videos than any other video. I've, you know, made more conversions for my courses and stuff like that. So find whatever nugget of information that does apply and pull that out and give that to them. So I use page views saying that they have a successful food guide series going. Maybe they don't. So instead I would say readers of my vegan food guides tend to be um, city dwellers, ages 30 and up. You know, get, tell a little bit of a story, give a stat, give a number, give a scenario, give them something that is going to prove your value. Obviously don't lie about it, but tailor it to whatever that is. Why would a Michelin rated restaurant want to work with a blogger whose average viewers or readers are 18? Right? So, you know, maybe this blogger knows that her average readers are 30 and older. That's a great thing to tell them because they're probably in the income level and all that stuff that can afford to go to a Michelin restaurant. So tailor it to them, add something in there. And then you go in for the pitch. I'd say something like, 
We'd love to include your restaurant in the guide. I'm just wondering if you're the correct person to reach out to to discuss any potential collaborations or something like that. I feel like the wording is off, but I'm gonna be typing as well. You don't ever, when you reach out to a brand, this is my opinion, um, some people might think it's wrong, but this is my opinion in my channel. You don't ever want to tell the brand what to do. So, you know, saying, hey, we're going to be here on this date, and she might as well have set a time to you. We need vegan food, we want multiple dishes, and this is what you're going to get, and you're going to say yes to it. It really takes the control away from them, and it definitely makes it all about you. So you really want to keep it open-ended. You know, they might have still had the same response again, but say there was somebody else who didn't post pitches on Twitter, um, say there was someone else and maybe they wouldn't have been able to afford it. I don't know how much, how expensive this restaurant is or what. Maybe they wouldn't have wanted to give away something that high value, but they might have said, oh, you know, well, we can give you like one free meal or, you know, we'll give you a free dessert or like something. And I'm not saying that that would make it worth your while because bloggers, influencers do work very hard. Like I guarantee you this food guide she's putting together takes a lot of work, a lot of energy, a lot of effort, a lot of resources, um, but I'll get into that after. So maybe, you know, it wouldn't have worked out, but it still would have opened the door to a collaboration and maybe somewhere down the line, they would have had a budget or they would have thought of, you know, an event that they want to do for influencers and invite influence. You know, you never know where things are going to end up down the line. So I like to keep things very organic and natural and collaborative instead of saying, this is what I do, this is what you are, this is what I want, and this is what you get. Like, I don't know, it's just very bossy and just not nice in general. So yeah, that's what I do. Um, I've done this for several different brands. Again, I don't do a ton of outreach um, anymore. I get a lot of brands coming to me, which I'm very grateful for. And obviously that's the goal. Um, I'm pretty busy with emails where I don't have time to actually prospect new sponsors. And I'm also not super focused on sponsors right now. I'm more focused on selling my courses and selling my one-on-one -on -one consulting calls and all of that stuff. And that's another thing that I do definitely hit on in my new course, my money-making micro-influencer is, you know, brand sponsorships are one, one revenue stream, but I don't want you guys to ever rely on them as everything because one i'm just gonna be honest with you here i haven't had any like horrible experiences working with a brand and i feel very grateful to have all the opportunities i've had and all the free stuff and all the paid stuff and whatever but there is definitely this vibe that like they're doing me a favor by letting me work with them and it doesn't it doesn't feel very collaborative nine times out of ten now i have worked with some awesome brands um a couple that i'm really excited just did a sponsored post they were awesome they treated me very nicely i felt like it was a collaboration like a true collaboration but a lot of brands aren't like that a lot of brands are like do this write you know say this script and buy like it just feels very kind of not that you know collaborative not that nice so that's one reason but the other reason is just because there's only so many sponsors in the world and especially if you're small like me a lot of brands will not give me the time of day like 10,000 is like it might as well be zero to them so there's lots of ways that you know I do make more money off of content creation than some people who have much bigger audience than me because I use my resources a little bit differently. That's one of the things that I stress, but I also do think that sponsorships can be a great way to get experience, to kind of broaden your horizons and just um, have some good collaboration and always is good have to have more businesses and brands in your corner. Cause again, like you never know where people will end up and what either of you guys will need in the future. And the idea is that you guys can kind of grow together and help each other out and sort of, you know, work together as a team long-term. But I also think that, you know, there's nothing wrong with reaching out to sponsors and sitting around and waiting for people to come to you isn't super realistic. If I was doing content creation 100% full time, you better believe I'd be emailing brands left and right because I don't get enough offers to sustain me. I get offers, you know, once in a while and most of them are, you know, lower dollar value. They're not, you know, $20,000 campaigns. They're usually a thousand dollars and under, which again, I'm very grateful for, but that doesn't pay the bills necessarily. So, and I don't, as you guys can see, I don't do a lot of sponsorships. Most of them I turn down. So yeah, anyway, kind of going on a tangent there, but the point is don't be afraid. Um, unfortunately, this probably did scare a lot of people off, which is, is unfortunate because, you know, the, the last point that I want to make is that this is really hard. And for any of you guys who are watching and haven't started making YouTube videos or Instagrams or blogs or whatever yet, 
it's a lot of work I'm not gonna lie to you I mean just setting up to shoot this video which is not even a great video it's not lit properly um, you know it's it's a sit down talking video it's not I'm not out in the world doing a travel guide or anything like that it took me a good you know 45 minutes just to set up and get myself in focus and get the lighting semi okay brush my hair and then I'm filming this that probably took an hour just to film it it's gonna take at least a couple hours to edit it especially you know things that are very research heavy like a food guide like a beauty video like anything that has to do with travel those all it require a lot a lot of research and you know my travel videos I have to pay to travel to those places unless I'm going for work an article that I read recently actually said I believe it was four out of five of Nordstrom's web traffic came from referral links from reward style which reward style vets their influencers very heavily I actually just got accepted to reward style this year um, and you know I have 10,000 subscribers which I'm not saying is huge but it's definitely not somebody who just has a, an Instagram like these are real people who do this pretty seriously and are real influencers that's crazy that is a crazy stat that is almost all of referral traffic to Nordstrom is from a referral link from an influencer tell me that we're not powerful you know again there's balance here I also don't think I'm the queen of freaking England okay I'm not that amazing but what we say definitely does have impact and I just wonder you know would this restaurant owner manager say the same thing if Kim Kardashian wrote an email saying that she wanted to eat there and put it on keeping up with the Kardashians obviously maybe that was a bad example because she has a huge huge <laughs> follower base but somebody like I don't know Alexis Bledel or like somebody who's just a smaller celebrity who probably has a similar following to a lot of you know influencers would they have treated her the same way? I somehow doubt it because for some reason being on the A-list and being a traditional celebrity is still held at a higher regard than an influencer and it's just a little silly to me because the numbers don't lie and you know in a lot of cases influencers actually have a bigger impact than someone like those people that I said. It's just an unfortunate situation honestly I was a little bit angry about reading that and I felt for you know the blogger but I also felt that she could have some improvements in her pitch so I hope that this was helpful. Again this is just a condensed version. Um, I have a lot more in the course so adjourneys.com slash course is where you can pre-enroll. I'm planning to launch in a couple weeks. I don't have a launch date quite yet but the price will go up at launch so get it before it goes up and I think that's all I have to say for now I'm really looking forward to new freelance Friday episodes I want to do a lot more interviews I did one and then I like I never did another one so if you're somebody who has a freelance business and you're interested in chatting with me let me know you know you can email me hello at adjourneys.com I'd love to chat with you and if you guys have suggestions for topics you'd like me to talk about let me know that as well and I will see you guys very soon in my next video thanks for watching bye